Well, thank you, team, for leading us into worship and church. Good morning to you. We're glad that you're here, and uh, we hope that this message will encourage you and will set you free. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, Jesus said to the people who believed him, You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So let's take out our sermon notes, let's prepare our hearts to know the Word of God and do what it says so that we can, procl- so that we can claim the, per- the promise to be set free from the burdens in life that weigh us down currently. Let's pray. So Holy Spirit, would you come and work in our hearts so that we would be willing to listen and to do what you are about to teach us through your Word. Help us to grow deeper into a relationship with you. In Jesus' name, we pray. And everyone across the screen says, Amen. Amen, amen. Friends, speaking of things that weigh us down today, and one of the biggest has to be COVID-19. You see, COVID-19 brought about many stress points in all of us, in fact, in people all around the world. There is this external stress, which most likely would be work most of the time, where business operations are restricted or closed, effective workforce goes down, but workload goes up, and stress goes up as well. Then there is the stress at home. Because we spend a lot of time at home, and some of our, some of our family members perhaps are starting to get on our nerves. And finally, there is the internal stress where we worry about when COVID-19 will be over so that the stresses that we mentioned earlier will disappear. And when life will resume back to normal because we can't plan anything more than two weeks in advance, at least for those of us here in Malaysia. Some may even feel hopeless and despair because life goals and dreams seem to grind to a halt. So with all these stresses, how do we manage it? Well, We look for ways to escape. It comes in the form of things like spending more time than needed at the office just to escape the house. Or the other way around, we spend too much time at home, supposed to be working, but not working. Or we eat too much. Or we do too much online shopping. Or we watch too much TV. And for some, even fall into things like lust, pornography, and even affairs. As a result, we feel so guilty, we feel so dirty about ourselves that we feel like we're not good enough for God. We don't dare to approach Him and we end up looking at other sources for hope and for security in life, at least in the near future. Like news on a COVID-19 vaccine that might be coming or better leaders in our local government or in world leaders through the recent US elections. Friends, if we ask ourselves why enough times and be really honest with ourselves and when we answer our own questions, we'll realize that the problems that we have at work, at home and internally all start with our own brokenness or our own sin. You see, often we don't even want to come before God to acknowledge our sins and ask for forgiveness because we feel guilty about them. And we think that when we go to God with our sins, God will reject us. But here's the thing, that is the lie of the devil. You see, one of the labels that scriptures put to the devil is the accuser. What does an accuser do? Accuse people. What is the result of an accusation? People feel guilty. And guilt does not make us right with God. In fact, it creates even more distance between us and God. You see, the correct response to sin should be to repent and ask forgiveness from God, not run away. So with this distance, we no longer go to God for hope. We feel hopeless in the face of COVID-19. And we had lost quite a number, and for those of us here in this church, we've lost quite a number of friends recently, Uh, and we are grieving over them. And we feel defeated because we don't see an end to COVID-19. No clear vaccine in sight, at least no clear candidate yet for the time being. 
and we become pessimistic about our own future. And because of that, we try to take control and we try to be self-sufficient by working harder, saving up more, stock up food, prepare for the worst. Why? Because we feel even if, if we don't even do that, we have no future. Friends, this morning I want to encourage you and I want you to point you back to good news in a time where many bad news and fake news are all around us. Let's look at some good news, all right? Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1 to 10. Let's look at three things in this passage that will guide our perspective as we move towards Christmas and into the new year. First thing I want to share with you and would you write down in your sermon notes is this. Don't put hope in knowledge. Don't put hope in knowledge. Verse 2 to verse 5 says this. This is what the Lord says. Don't act like the other nations who try to read their future in the stars. Don't be afraid of their predictions even though other nations are terrified by them. Their ways are futile and foolish. They cut down a tree and the craftsman crafts an idol. They decorate it with gold and silver and then fasten it securely with hammer and nails so it won't fall over. Their gods are like helpless scarecrows in a cucumber field. They cannot speak and they need to be carried because they cannot walk. Don't be afraid of such gods for they can neither harm you nor do you any good. Now friends, I know that we don't look to the stars to read our own future. Neither do we make idols out of trees. But if we look closer at the principle behind these verses, it is effectively saying this. If we trust and worship anything that is not God for our future, we are putting our hope in something that can do nothing for us. The issue is with our hearts. You see, there's nothing wrong with wanting to gain knowledge. But when we put our hope in that knowledge, especially for our future, that's when our focus shifts away from God. For example, if we pour over the news every day, hoping to see an update about a vaccine, a viable vaccine that becomes available, and it can eliminate COVID-19, we'll also be asking questions like, where is this available? How much does it cost? And when will it arrive? And I think, and, and also think that this, this vaccine, or rather this piece of news about a vaccine, and if we think that this is the key of having a future, and this is where me and my colleagues at work will be immune and the company can function and revert back to normal operations. Or some might even think that with this, I won't have to stay home so long anymore and face this annoying person every day at home. That's when our hearts shift focus away from God to trusting knowledge knowledge that seem to promise a future where, thi where things go back to normal. Again, let me say, one thing to gain knowledge is not wrong. It is something wrong when we put our hope in that knowledge itself. According to Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 5, it says, Do not be afraid of such gods, for they can neither harm you nor do you any good. Why does the Bible call it a God and spell it with a small g? Because what we trust, we will worship. And that becomes a God to us. Second point, and would you write this down in your notes? Don't put hope in people. Don't put hope in people. Verse 6 and 7 says, Lord, there is no one like you. You are, a great, you are great and your name is full of power. No one who would not fear you, O king of nations. That title belongs to you alone. All the wise people of the earth and in all the kingdoms of the world, there is none like you. Another place that we commonly put our hope in is people. Especially 
in people's ability to lead, to provide leadership. You see, in a pandemic situation, we look to and hope for capable leadership that can manage the situation to bring us back towards a COVID-free country where we can once again live normal lives just like before the pandemic. But here's the thing. We're putting our hope in human beings who are imperfect, always changing, and prone to self-centeredness. Everyone is like that. Then that includes you and me. We are all broken, and our natural tendency is to sin. Look at history, and we will realize that even the best and the purest of hearts of all leaders and of all people do fall into sin in one way or another multiple times. Here's a very simple example for us to test this. Wherever you are in your homes and in your families and wherever you go, even after this, you can do this test with your friends. Everybody put your hands up. All right? Everybody have your hands up. Just one hand will do. And now answer this question. If you have never told a lie before, put your hand down. My hand is still up. Friends, lying is a sin. And among people who hold leadership positions, you can only imagine, one can only imagine if a leader lies in his providing of leadership. Consequences can be small, and when it really matters, it is really big. It can, it can be devastating. That itself is an example of sin. Everyone is broken. And I'm pretty sure if you look around your house, if you look around your room, wherever you are, just now with that little example, I think everyone's rooms, every, everyone's hands in the room is up if they're really, really honest. So friends, if we put our hope on people, we are bound to be disappointed. It didn't matter which, go, which candidate goes into the Malaysian government, or the US government, that person remains a human who is imperfect, prone to sin, and have no direct ability within themselves to stop a natural disaster or a pandemic like COVID-19. On the other hand, our God is full of power. He is called the King of Nations. No human wiser than Him because wisdom itself comes from Him. Which brings me to my last point. I'm getting excited here because this is where the good news really starts. Would you write in your notes the third and final point? Put hope in the living God. Put hope in the living God. Verse 10 says, But the Lord is the only true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. The whole earth trembles at His anger. The nations cannot stand up to His wrath. Friends, if we can't put our hope on knowledge or on people, the only place left that we can put our hope is the one and only living God. His name is Jesus. He's the only one who has the real power and ability to command and to change all of nature, all of creation. The authorities of the leaders from the world, believe it or not, came from Him. Which is also why Romans chapter 13 verse 1 says, Submit to all governing authorities. And if I may add, even the ones we don't like. Why? Because that authority came from God. All authority came from God. The point is, our God who is alive today has control even over the leaders of the world and dictates those who would take leadership at a specific time, at a specific place. In other words, they are there because God has placed them there. God has allowed them to be there in this particular time, in this particular place. So if God is so powerful, why is it it didn't occur to us to go to Him as our first response, especially in such time that we are all in need? Two reasons. 
First one is we don't feel good enough for God. Already, we have already talked about this earlier on. Uh, we're too ashamed to go to Him. We're afraid that He will reject us, but we know this is the lie of the devil. The second reason, which, we, which is where we, I want to focus on this morning, is that most of the time, over Easter or Christmas, every year, we will hear the gospel. When we do, and I'm guilty of this too, we focus on the fact that Jesus came and died on the cross for our sins. But, we forgot that he also rose from the dead. Friends, Jesus is a living God today. Today. He is alive today. He didn't stay in the grave. He's alive right now and he is with you where you are in your home, in the room that you're in, with your family or wherever you are watching this from. Don't believe me? Matthew 18, verse 20. For where two or three are gathered together as my followers, I am there among them. So if you're gathered in your own home right now, in whichever room you are with your family, and, there are, and if there are more than two of you, and all of you believe in Jesus this morning, know that He is with you right now, where you are. And what if your family is not with you? What if you're alone watching this right, when you're watching this right now? Is God still with you? Here's your answer. John chapter 14, verse 17. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees Him nor knows Him, you know Him. He dwells with you and will be in you. So even if you're alone, God is with you. Right now, this very moment, Friends, our God is a living God. He's alive today and He's with us right now, this very moment and will continue to be with us. So what? Well, stop sending letters and telegrams to God where we only pray and talk to Him once in a long time or once only when we really need Him and when we're really desperate. Do a FaceTime with Him. Talk and pray often any time of the day, wherever you are, even while you're walking on the streets and you don't have to close your eyes. You don't have to put your hands together. Because doing those two things, well, it's just a method for, to help us focus on our prayer, to focus our attention on God. So if you can focus and if being safe means you keep your eyes open. For example, if you're driving or you're walking on the street, taking the train, keep your eyes open. It's fine. So long as your heart is focused on God, you are praying. So do a FaceTime with Him. Talk to Him often. Pray often and all the time. Share your concerns, your feelings. Share your hopes and dreams. Acknowledge that He's there with you. Praise Him. Thank Him. Scripture says, give thanks in all circumstances, not for all circumstances. In all circumstances, in other words, find things to give thanks for. Be thankful. Praise Him, thank Him, and ask for His help with all your decisions, with all our decisions that we have to make every day. And wait on Him. Wait on Him. You see, we tend to think that God's timing is slow. But if we get used to listening to Him, when we get used to listening to that still, small voice, we might be surprised that sometimes, even before we pray, He is already moving before we ask in prayer. All we need to do is pray. So now, let's pray. Pray now. Pray all the time, not once in a long time or only when we need Him. I'm going to close with this. Don't put hope in knowledge. Don't put hope in people. Put hope in the living God. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a hope and the future. Friends, only through God we will have a future and He is our source of hope even in such a time as this 
when we are stuck with COVID-19. What's the purpose of COVID-19? Well, we don't know. But the point is, as it says in Jeremiah 29, 11, all this happens not to bring, not for disaster, but is to give us a future and a hope. And the only reason why God is allowing this to happen is because there is a greater good that He can see, not, not we can see or I can see, but God can see. There is a greater good that God can see out of COVID-19 that He can bring out of this situation. And for us, only in hindsight will we be able to know and see and give thanks for the things that are happening right now in our current circumstances. So friends, let's put our hope in God through prayer and receive affirmation by reading the Bible. He grants peace in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Let's just do that as we head into Christmas and into the new year. How important is this? Some of you might ask. C.S. Lewis said this, Christianity, if false, is of no importance. And if true, is of infinite importance. The only thing it cannot be is moderately important. Friends, our personal, individual faith is important. And you are the only one who is responsible for your own faith. If you haven't, I want to encourage you to put your hope in the living God starting today. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, in such a time as this, in such a time that there's just so much need around us, both in our homes and outside the homes, at the workplace and even within ourselves, that we struggle. Lord, today we know and we learn that you are the only one who, who can ever do something about all this. So help us to trust you. Help us to put our hope in you. Help us to look to you only as our only source of hope and for a future. Because your plans for us are for good, not for destruction. To give us a hope in the future. So starting today, help us to take real steps to depend on you. Not on our, not on our knowledge, not on our ability, not on other people, but only on you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.